Hey everybody, welcome back to the Legends and Dragons podcast. I haven't put my mic on yet. <laughs> I hate this place. <laughs> I hate this place. <laughs> I hate this place. This place. This place. Episode 34. I'm so happy. You like this? Yes. Legends <laughs> Lair here in Hearst, Texas. Chance Burleson. Jimmy Close. We have our good friend, Michael Rodriguez, the Jedi. Finally, finally, finally on the podcast. Dude, I'm excited. I'm been promising you this. Haven't yeah. we been trying to get him on since we started the podcast? Yes, but he's like that. He's like that. Uh, that date that will just ghost you, like just <laughs> keep going, like, hey man, you had a hey. What do you think? Ghosted. All right. So, so the real question is, Michael, uh, why do you hate me? I don't <laughs> hate. <you. laughs> Let's start no. this off right off the bat. Yeah, why do you hate him? Here's here's the problem. <laughs> here's the problem. Y'all do these during. Business hours. Yeah. <laughs> and so that is true. I and I have baker's hours. Yeah. And so it's very hard. You do, don't you? Yeah, I have I baker's hours. I do have baker's hours. You know, I'm, I'm excited to talk about that though. But hey, yeah. um, hey have you guys seen the uh, the color of Stevie Wonder's shoes? Neither has he. Oh, you got it. I was going to set that up for uh, for Valdez. Sorry. <laughs> we're we're with the man, the myth, the legend uh, behind that the big story, right? Oh man! So so Valdez was what episode? Shoot, like thirty plus episodes ago, which is by far my favorite. Episode. I okay. So I for well, one for one specific reason. Okay, y'all didn't cut fast enough, and so. On Spotify, I got to watch my head instructor get up and go, I have to pee. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fun to stay there because, because Valdez sent me a message afterwards. I guess him and Amber were watching it. Yeah. And he goes, you guys didn't cut that out? No. <laughs> I don't know. We don't really cut that out. And get an absolute favor. <laughs> yeah, an absolute favor. Because that is the essence of Miguel. So, <laughs> so for those that don't know, who are just turning in, uh, Legends and Dragons podcast, Legends, we heard Legends Martial Arts. Dragon uh, is because of our blind dragon, if you will, our instructor, uh, master, grandmaster, yeah, right yes, yes, who is who is blind, and so with the blind story, I I kind of saved it for you to tell the blind story. Like, okay, yeah, there's okay. different versions of it. Here's the real version. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, when I met Master Valdez, I was 18. I was, it was my freshman year in college. I was still competing in the, the AOK at the time, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I think it was actually probably one of my last years that I did it. Creep. Um, so we're in Austin. I'm competing. And he, I do my special kata, and I watch him do his traditional kata. And then we, we watch each other fight. We didn't get to fight each other, but we watched each other fight. And throughout the whole day, I am the typical Austin kid, right? My hair is long. Uh, I look like a hipster. I dress like a hipster. It was it was bad. I'm wearing the the long hakawa, my sword. I had a bandana that I wrapped around my my wrist because I was a sweater. That's actually the reason why is because I was always so sweaty. Okay, so I was able to like wipe myself. Like I would wear it out in public, like school, and he'd wear it because I would just anytime I looked outside, I'd start sweating. So. It became like my fashion thing. <laughs> and Miguel and Amber um, thought it was cool because right before I did my sword form, took it off, put it across my head, did my thing, uh, go out there, and he tell or Amber tells him, we need to be friends. And so he walks up to me and he's like, hi. And he's looking like off to the side and goes, hi, <laughs> my same name's same Miguel. Same and I'm like, hi, Miguel. <laughs> Did you think it was disrespectful because he wouldn't look you in the eye? I did. You know he was blind. No, I absolutely didn't know. And to this day, I still don't know if he's actually blind or not. <laughs> but that we'll get to that part. So, <laughs> so I didn't think it was disrespectful. I just thought it was weird. Mm-hmm. And so we had the conversation. We instantly became like good friends that day. Yeah. We made the same jokes. We had the same humor. Um, it was, we were making fun of other people. Like it was, <laughs> right. it was a good day. And so we end up going to our sparring match. We both lose our first round. And then somehow we ended up still placing third place. Oh, uh, cause at the, at the time they did first, second, third, third. Mm-hmm. So we go and he's like, Hey, can you sign for my trophy? I'm like, I'm not signing for your trophy, Duke. Like that's yours, man. He goes, where do I sign? 
on the paper, Miguel. But where on the paper? <laughs> where it says third place, Miguel. And then he goes, I don't know where that is. And so I take his hand and I put it on the paper and he gets this close to the paper and starts signing it. And I'm like, holy crap, he actually is blind. Like, I had no idea. I thought he was messing with me the whole time. So the next, we, we exchange numbers and the next day he calls me and says, hey, are you, are you still in Austin? I'm like, yeah, I live here. And he goes, well, we stayed the night and I just realized that you and I didn't get to spar. Do you want to fight? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Do we become best friends? That's <laughs> right. Go. Oh, yeah. So he goes, do you have a place? I'm like, no, I'm a broke college student. I don't even train here. Like I train out of my dorm room. Yeah. And he goes, well, my hotel gave me two free passes to Gold's Gym. Let's just use them this morning. You have to come drive me though. I'm like, okay. So go pick them up. Go to Gold's. I, I signed all the paperwork because he walks in with his blind cane, big cell right. So this, and uh, so I fill out all the paperwork for him. And this is eight o'clock in the morning on a Sunday at Gold's Gym. There's nothing but roided out meathead right, right. lifting weights as loud and as grunting as possible. Yeah. 300 pound plus guys just bulked up. So we walk past all of them, go into like the fitness room where it has all the, the mirrors is where they do all the yoga and stuff. Yeah. Turn on the lights, put the gear on, and there's a big window that you can see to the rest of the, the weight room, right? Yeah. We get our gear on. We start fighting each other. And it was light for about 20 seconds. <laughs> and then I'm pretty sure he bloodied my lip first. And then it was on. Yeah. And me and him went after it. Like, yeah. we didn't stop until one of us conceded. And I'm not sure we have ever stopped, says. Okay, so uh, I think it was, no one's conceded. No one's conceded yet. Okay. We fight for an hour and a half. And I'm looking over the window because all those weak heads now are, like, lifting the dumbbells next to the window right. so they can watch us fight. So we get done, pack up our gear. I walk out first, and the guys are like, okay, okay. And then they see him pull out his blind cane and walk past all of it, all Stevie Wonder style. <laughs> and I'm like, you did not just do that to me. Because now all these media guys just think that I just beat up a blind guy. Right. <laughs> right. And he's smiling here and here because I know he knows what he's doing. Oh, yes. So he walks out, and we start to leave. And he says, hey, I got to piece of gear I need to take off. Where's the restroom? So I said, it's over at this door. It's, too, it's the right door. So I point him in that direction. Like, Keep going straight. You'll find the door. He goes in and it takes him about 45 seconds to realize I sent him into the windows bathroom. <laughs> you hear screeching and screaming <coughs> out and he comes out cussing me out. He's like, where's the actual bathroom? <laughs> we were best friends ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's when you do your that's that's when you do. Yeah, that's such a great story. But, but that's the thing though, because I still, I still question. Like yeah. my, my biggest joke that I ever tell him, and yeah. I don't think he's joking, is yeah. I, he's going to give me a letter when he passes away. And it says, do not open until you read my eulogy. Yeah. And all it's going to be when I open it up is, ha ha, you were right. Because it's going to be the longest running joke. That's that <laughs> He's so been fine this whole time. That's class. so funny. Like, oh. See, for me, I never realized how blind he was until you go out to lunch with him. Yeah. See, because you're so used to seeing him at the dojo. Yeah. Where, every, where he knows where everything is. Everything. Even in this hell, where everything is. And you're like, okay. So I'm... I direct him to the restroom, and then he comes back, and he sits down at another table. I'm like, uh, no, that's about that. Uh, hey, over, over here. He's like, oh, sorry, guys. And oh, yeah. I was like, man, I keep forgetting how blood you actually are. Anyways, hey, man, this hat. I want to talk about the hat real quick. You want to talk about that? No, of course I want to talk about what you want. I want to talk about I just discussed that yeah, you yeah. liked the hat, and that was the whole story. No, there's, no, there's a story there's... to that. Do we want to build up to that, though? Well, we, I think we have to. All right, so you're from so you're from originally from Austin. No, I'm actually originally from Azle. Oh, okay. girl, here. You're kidding. Yeah, I live in Azle. Yeah, yeah, I grew up by the junior high. Literally, really. Did yeah. you go to that junior high? I did the old junior high. That's yeah, they have the new one. The no, I know, I know the old junior high. Yeah, how old are you? Thirty nine. I wonder. I wonder. Did you have Talon and Burleson for yes? That's my mom. No kidding. <laughs> she taught American history, eighth grade history. Did you have her? Could yes. Be? Yes. That's my mom. I did not know this. Everybody had my mom that went to that. Yeah. We, yeah. She was, you know, look at that. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I did How crazy is that? Yeah. Huh. 
Yeah, yeah that was well. I when she a great teacher. She was amazing. Yeah, she's one of like four teachers that I remember. Yeah, I why did I never make that connection? I think she, because she went by Miss B, and maybe you would yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. she didn't say burlesome all the time. So yeah, that's my mom. I'm not trying to make this about me, but I didn't have you know, mom was a teacher. Well, you also didn't go to Hazel. You left out though. You know, I mean, I, it, it was she was a great, great teacher. Yeah, I remember. Man, she got me out of trouble a lot. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't have her. I had Meryl, you know, who was her buddy, yeah. Coach Meryl. Yes. And I was in trouble. I got it. So you, do they, like, I went to junior high when you still got licks, when you still got swats. Yeah. With a paddle. Yeah. I asked, dude, I got swats all the time. All the time. <laughs> Is anybody shocked by that? Are you guys shocked? I, I'm not shocked by that. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, so you grew up That's, in Hazel. Yeah. So I grew up in Hazel. Did you graduate out of high school out of Hazel? I did. So what? So school, college, college. I went to UT in Austin. Okay. So you went to UT from Austin. I came back here for about a year or two, and then I got my job, yeah. and they sent me every. So you, so you graduated out of UT. Yes. What did you? What? What was your degree? Uh, sociology. Okay. So uh, Those, UT didn't have a law enforcement degree, but. All of the classes that I love, like criminology, criminal justice, it was all social under sociology. Okay. So yeah. uh, I had one professor, I think I took four of his classes because he was the criminology professor. Yeah. And uh, he recommended me to the recruiters for for the uh, my agency down there. Okay. And they called me and they go, Hey, uh, I'm looking for Mikey Rodriguez. And I'm like, who is this? And he rattles, I'm special agent, blah, blah, blah. I didn't do it. <laughs> that was the first response. First response. <laughs> and I remember it. He goes, I know you didn't do it. Put on a suit. Yeah. Come to this place, 6 p.m., ask for me. Do you understand? Yes, sir. And he hangs up on me. Okay. And this is at like 6.30 at night. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm like, I'm not going. <laughs> this is a long <laughs> setup. <laughs> and I was with a girl I was dating at the time and my roommates and uh they're like, I doesn't matter. If that person calls you, you have to go. Don't yeah. get pumped. And so like, okay, I did. Put on a suit the next day. Um, I showed up six PM and my hair's all pulled back in a ponytail because I'm telling you, my hair was longer. Yeah. My hairline was like down here. <laughs> and so everything looked like a bop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I walk into a room and I'm surrounded by military personnel. Okay. Everybody's in dress blues. I sit down. I'm like 30 minutes early because I'm freaking out about it. Everybody else was earlier than me. I was the last one to walk in. Right. And I'm sitting next to a Marine sniper and an Army Ranger. And they're trading Iraq and Afghanistan and Fallujah stories. And I remember listening to them going, I did that on Call of Duty last night. Like, <laughs> these guys are <laughs> shit. Right. Yeah. yeah. And these two special agents walk in, they introduce themselves. They said, we're only hiring for El Paso and Del Rio. If you don't like that, get out. And two people did. Yeah, they got and I'm still figuring out like, wait, what? When is like, this? What? Where is Del, I, I don't, where's the, where's Del, where's Del, where's Del, 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 I don't understand what anything's going on. And yeah. then, then they send out paperwork and people are asking questions. And, uh, and about halfway through the paperwork, I realized it was a job application. Whoa. And I'm like, I messed up. <laughs> yeah. So I filled it out and then they break us up in groups and I'm sitting with the Marine sniper and the army ranger. Yeah. And when the special agent comes in and he goes, uh, why do you want to be one of us? And this dude goes, well, I spent my last, you know, five years hunting terrorists in Iraq and Afghanistan and I want to be here and do it on my home front. Okay. This guy goes, well, my field training officer thought this would be a great, you know, a uh, way for me to stay, keep using my skill set to, you know, protect our country. He looks at me, and I, go, I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> and mind you, he says, like, bury your paperwork, and he stops. He yeah. slowly looks up, and he goes, who sent you? I'm like, Ashton Kutcher? I, like, <laughs> I had no idea. Why? And he goes, are you that college kid that Mark sent me? I'm like, yes. He goes, you're the martial artist. I'm like, Yes. Oh. And he goes, what have you done? And uh, I told him, you know, I was, like, I was state champion at the time. I was I was a kickboxer at the time. I was teaching down in Austin at the time. He goes, okay, cool. 
get out. And that was it. And then like a week later, he calls me again and says, hey, you have an interview in San Antonio on this day. It's like in a week, the week after. Okay. Uh, wear a suit, cut your hair. Yes, sir. I think that is up. And then I go to San Antonio the next week, do the interview. I'm all clean cut now, shaved. Like, now, like, I took my bath for the month and, you know, got, got into it. And it was a three and a half hour interview session. Okay. And it was all about everything that I put in the application. Did I lie on anything of it? And then they asked me like hypothetical questions, like, what would you do if in this scenario? Yeah. So, yeah. And the whole idea of that was to basically get you to trip on your words. Okay. Yeah. And I did it until the very last question. And I remember the question was, if you were escorting somebody, they have to stop, use a bathroom. So you go to a police station and that dude's girlfriend is there making a play. What do you do? And so I give a answer, like we're, you know, we're separated from the public. Girlfriend shouldn't know that we're there. Maybe we can go to another one. And, or, yeah. You know, just, you have to spitball. Right. And their whole idea is to make you go full circle, to make you second guess yourself. And so at the very end, I, I, I got frustrated. I'm like, look, that's not enough information. I need to know where I'm at. I need to know where I'm going. I need to know what other shots we can do. Do we have a bottle in the in the car, like, yeah, yeah. do we have to stop there? How bad is it got to go? And the guy's like, okay, get out. Okay. <laughs> and I walk out. I'm just a wreck. Because now I understand what, what's on stake. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the same guy that called me at the beginning, he's there. And okay. so he's like, hey, Mike, are you good? And I'm like, oh, no, man. He goes, well, obviously you're good because you're about to do the ring part. And I was like, what? What uh, what am I doing? Like, I gave it, I you still know. From the day you called me, I still have no idea. He goes, "Don't worry about this." <laughs> okay, wow. so uh, we did the red part, and it was basically how to describe a picture. And all he said was, "Just be organized when you describe." It. So uh, you have fifteen minutes. Write as much as you can. And uh, I was like, "Okay," and I'm still sweating bullets. And he goes, "Look, Mike, we've done." 40 interviews, you're meeting the four other people we've given this part to. You're like, wow, this, 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 oh, yeah. how? out of all the pool that I know that I applied for, right. applied yeah. with, how am I getting through all this? And uh, and he goes, I don't know. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what? So, you know, we go through that, and then that starts the, the, the background investigation. I think I was doing that part for almost two years. Okay. It took me that long to get through the payroll or through the academy and then, or at least get the date for the academy. Right. And then it was another six months in the academy. Yeah. And then, Dude. That's, so, and so you said Mark was the one that, that called you or the, the very, Mark was the one that sent you. Mark, Mark was the one that sent me. That was my professor. Okay. So, okay. He was so, a professor at, he was a professor at the school. He just retired two years ago. Okay. Criminology or sociology. Uh, so he was a criminologist, okay. but he taught sociology. And so he did the basic sociology class, and then he did all of the advanced like criminology classes. Oh, sir. So it's interesting that, um, so I obviously, when I went to college, I, uh, like many people that are like me, um, you take that basic psych 101 class. Yeah. And you're like, I want to be a psychologist. Like so many people yeah. take psychology and think this is what I want to do. Yes. But it wasn't until I took sociology that I was like, okay, I don't want to be a psychologist. This is what fascinates me. It's, and exactly it was, it was in, right. It yeah. was in sociology that I learned one of the most valuable things that I've ever learned in my life. Yeah. And that is the internal and external locus of control. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yes. So basically there's a time, there's a continuum, Jimmy, and every human being on the in the world falls somewhere on this continuum. Okay. okay. An internal locus of control is a God complex. All the way to this side is I am 100 percent control in control of everything that happens in my life. External is a victim mentality. I'm in absolute zero control of anything that happens in my life. It's all uh external events. And then I remember him looking at us and going, okay, 
where do you think the happiest people on the planet fall on this continuum? Because internal is narcissistic. Yeah. Right? Yeah. External is victim. Yeah. Right? And he said, and of course, everybody's throwing out their, their spitballing. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And he said, the data shows that on the internal side, uh, just on the outside of the middle, like more internal than okay. external. Okay. Yeah. The happiest people think that they have more control over what happens in their life, but there are still some things that they don't have control over. Right. Yeah. And oh. and I was and I never forgot that. Because I'm like, okay, that's what I want to be. Yeah, right. There. I want to be somebody who feels like they have their hand on the wheel most of the time. Right. Yeah. But not a hundred percent of the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So your martial arts career. What, when did you get into martial arts? So I got in when I was six. Okay. Um, you trained with Trey, didn't you? Didn't you? Sure did. did. Trey. That's his hat. Oh. So I trained. So I started with Lewis Jones. Okay. Um, yeah. In River Oaks. And I got to third degree. I think at the time when I got my first degree of black belt, I was the youngest in Texas. Okay. Um, I drive by that school every single day on my way home. Yeah. 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 Oh, uh, so like kid black belts didn't really, exist. they didn't back then. No, they didn't. Oh, uh, and I, I remember him telling me that we were, me and my best friend, he was nine. Uh, we were the youngest ones to get our black belts in Texas at the time. And then after that, they were diamond dozen. Yeah. Uh, but now they're, now they're worth less. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> diamond dozen was a uh, high end. Yeah. Yeah, inflation sucks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I trained, I started training there because uh, I was, you know, in Azel back in, you know, early 90s, my family and one other family were the only families that weren't white. Just so, yeah, you know, kindergarten, I was getting picked on. Yeah. I was the smallest one out of the whole school, yeah. you know. So uh, my dad was just getting tired of me coming all cry. Sure. And yeah. so, you know, he taught me, you know, the his amount of boxing that he, you know, watched off of Telemundo and I it didn't help. And so he tells my mom, I'm gonna put him in karate. My mom is the helicopter mom. Like uh, she was the definition of helicopter mom okay. before helicopter moms existed. Mm -hmm. Completely overprotective. I was the baby of the family. Yeah. Um uh, only how many siblings do you have? I have two sisters. Okay. And they're 10 and 13 years older than me. So I'm the baby baby. Okay. Uh, and I'm the only boy. And my mom's big and needs. And so that's like, everything was just like, he can't get hurt. He's not doing anything to get hurt. We're not playing sports. We're not doing anything. Oh, you're a kid. Porcelain doll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my dad would take me every Tuesday and Thursday to go get ice cream. And he kept in my, in his truck, my geek. And so we would sneak out for 45 minutes. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I love your dad. <laughs> and we would we'd go to karate. Yeah. And uh, after probably about a month or so, my mom caught on. Oh, Every Tuesday oh, and Thursday, we were yeah. going for ice cream. Right. And uh, she followed us one day. And I'm in the middle of class. She comes in like a raging tornado. I mean, she is angry she's yelling at everybody under the god given sun things yeah. that i have never heard before yeah, coming yeah. out of her her voice like it was demonic like it was just mad. <laughs> she was mad man. my dad is like whoa 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 nobody's understanding a word that you're saying you're like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. which is yeah. good yeah and she just grabs me by the back of my gi top and it's just lifting me up and is carrying me out like just walks in the middle of the mat grabs me and yanks me out Screaming at my dad, screaming at the instructors, you're not going to have my baby boy. And yeah. One of the parents came up to her and said, look, I understand your fear. He grabs her by the hand. It's like, I understand your fear. My son is this, is in the same class. I don't think he would be here if your son. Oh, wow. And she goes, they're having fun. They're really safe. Come watch me. And so they white knuckled each other for the rest of class. Wonderful. Then they came the next day yeah. and like knuckled each other again yeah. in the middle of class. We're having fun. I mean, right. sure yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, it's a four to six year old class. Right. So sure. Sure. Yeah. we're just being goofy at the time. So uh, she goes, 
okay, I guess he likes it enough. He can stay. And that was it. If it wasn't for... Did you ever find out that mom, like, have you ever talked to that mom again? I still do. No, they are. Do you, you see how significant that, that other mom was yes. in your life? Like, if she hadn't been there to do that with her? No, she, wow. is, she is my second mom, Donna. Wow. Uh, wow. Thank she, you, Donna, for making the dad. Yeah. yeah. I still, I, I, I'm still, I'm still there. Wonderless brother. Wonderful. One of six kids. Oh. Uh, and so I have a second dad. I have a second mom. That's yeah, third cool. dad, third mom, fourth mom. I mean, like, I was raised by a village. So, sure, sure. Yeah. You know, like, it, it was just, I, there's a lot of different sets of parents that helped me yeah. be the person. I sure. Am. So well, I was all more harsh with it. It was, it was very, very karate. So Lewis Jones was one of Bobby Nuttall's black belts. Bobby Nuttall is one of dad's black belts. Okay. Yeah. okay. So he started in a, you know, a, a, in, in the Fort Worth branch of, of Pat Burles and karate, yeah. um, it was uh, part of the lineage of dad. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very cool. So, so Donna talked your mom into you staying. Right. And then, and they stayed. We stayed. And, uh, we grew up in the ranks together. Okay. Uh, we, we fought, we, we had a lot of fun. We became, yeah. uh, uh, that was our second family. Okay. And so, uh, so if it was, wasn't, yeah, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here. So what got you into the compete? Cause you so, started when you were, you said, so it was, it was when I think my first turn, it was like a few months after we joined. Okay. And so me and Brandon competed on our first tournament together. Yeah. Uh, and I think it took, what, I don't know. I, I still have the trophies. It's crazy. My mom kept them all. Oh, uh, but it was at, like a little in-house turn. Mm, okay. And so, oh, uh, we had a blast. And then that, oh, like, I, I want to keep doing this. My dad saw the potential in it and says, go. Okay. And so, uh, we did every possible tournament. Let me go like, okay, okay, back then. Until... I think it was maybe I was a brown belt or maybe my first black belt when they started doing the special ecotic because that wasn't uh, that didn't exist when right. I started. Okay, so so it was just what it was traditional kata, traditional it was sparring, sparring, okay, Quite sparring. That was it. There was okay. no continuous sparring. There wasn't breaking. No self defense. Nothing like that. Okay, so it was just kata the sparring. Okay. Then they did a specialty, and I'm like, oh, we can do specialty because I was on the demo team for for Mr. Jones. So yeah, oh. Uh, I was like, oh, I'll just do my my demo out there. And it was to the Mortal Kombat song. Okay. Because uh, every kid did mm -hmm. their special yeah. form to that Mortal Kombat song. Right, right. Uh, and I go out there, and I'm nine, eight at the time. So, And I'm this big at right. eight years old. Yeah. So I had like 10 points added because I was cute. <laughs> and another yeah. 10 because i was asian and then yep <laughs> you know like so we can, it worked you know, like it worked asian kid yeah 10 point yeah like you know all right, right. Yeah. yeah so yeah. so i would i was winning when i was a kid and uh, doing the specialty form i did it for years and yeah. then uh and so then um lewis jones closed the school when i was about 13 okay and uh to this day i still don't know why like I, I'm sure he tried to explain to me back then. I just I didn't know how to do it. Right. I mean, yeah, yeah, no. Wait, now no. he had the school in Lake Worth, and that's the one you're talking about that that empty building now. So that's where the school was. Now he was, moved it to River Oak, right? And then you went to River. I went to River Oak. So you're talking about when he closed that school? Yes, because that was like a two story school. And he was yeah. a huge so, school. Yeah. So he so he started off from the one at Lake Worth, and then. Uh, that was like right on high walls. Yeah, it doesn't exist now because they tore it down for the highway. Uh, oh no, it, the building's still there. Is it? Yeah, oh. it's defunct. I mean, they're yeah. trying to tear it down. Yeah. Oh, uh, but he went to that two story. It's like a pawn shop. Yeah, no, it's right there on the corner of still, Delbert's cut off. Still smells like that. It's cool. Yeah, and it's you know, that that place will never not smell right. like a dope joke for me. Yeah, and then he moved it down the street, and that was his last one. Okay. And then he closed it. He closed that one, and so. Uh, I keep closer when I was like 13 or 14. What kind of? And yeah, it was Steve. Because that was my second home. I had no idea. And it was just one of those things like, I don't know if he told parents because he didn't tell the kids, but there was just a sign on the door. And so we were going to class. Yeah. And I saw the sign. I'm like, hey, that's not good. And everything is in boxes inside. And it was like, I was just in class yesterday. Like, mm -hmm. it was that quick for me. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, 
uh, about a year goes by and a bunch of other crap happens in high school and, and life. Yeah. And, uh, I was not a good kid at that point. Yeah. Only thing that saved me was teachers liked me because I was an AR all student. I was right. Right. Yeah. You know, I was top of the class or well, near the top of the class. And, uh, the only thing that kept them from like sending me to Judy was, uh, cause they understood what was going on at the time. And then two kids or two girls in my class were talking about trade school. And they're like, we just went to the weirdest place ever. Mike, you would love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? What a great sales pitch. I like it. And they're like, yeah, this guy's just weird. He's tall. He's got like a mullet thing. And he yells a lot. And I'm like, I gotta meet this guy. Yeah. And, uh, so I call him and then I don't go for like a month and just they like I it was far because it was in Benbrook and I was like man I don't I don't know if I'm ready to go back into it you know it kind of yeah. hurt sure 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 you know Mr. Yeah. Jones and and stuff like that so I finally go and Trey Hanrahan was everything that the legend lived up to Right. Yeah. He was just a weird, weird guy. Okay. Uh, he was 6'3". He was 160 pounds. He had a skullet because he couldn't grow hair in the front. Okay. He was missing teeth from like one side. He had a scar over his eye, goatee, uh, piercing in his, eye, in his eyebrow, piercing on his ears, and just, just a commanding dude. Okay. Right. And he walks in. He goes, what are you here for? Oh, like, I'm here for the free trial. I might. And he goes, Okay. And he tried to drive me away for three months. Did he really? Yeah. He hated me. Really? He absolutely hated me. So what did he do to try to drive you away? He tried to torture us through glass. Okay. And was he probably real estate? But his one he was he was a Marine. All right. Army sniper. Okay. Uh, he was Vietnam veteran. Okay. And I didn't find this out until on his deathbed. Like I just thought he was just working me out. Yeah. But he was legitimately trying to rub me off. Because he knew that I was busy. Ooh. And so, oh, uh, yeah. Okay. And, uh, and I was just too stubborn and too stupid to realize it. Yeah. And at the time, is what I needed. I needed that structure. I needed uh, that, yeah, yeah. that aggression to get out. Sure. And, uh, and so, literally, I mean, for almost three months, he's, he's trying to run me off. He had two... Adopted twin boys, Josh and John Crow. Well, they, he called them in one day. Like we go through claps and he says, Hey, Mikey, I need you to put your gear on. I, okay. I got my gear. And he's like, you're going to fight my sons. And they proceed to beat the crap out of me for another hour after class. I am eating it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, that's what, yeah. I'm, I get it, man. I'm 16. Yeah. And like, I get the fight for real. Like, yeah, it's yeah, amazing. Yeah. There's no, there's no like patty cake in this school. It was yeah, yeah. full contact all the time. Mr. Jones always had rules. Like, we couldn't hurt each other. It was, you know, we, yeah. he wanted people to stay. Right. Yeah. And I'd never been to a place that wanted me to go. And so I'm loving it. I'm like, I get to like, Finally, figure out where my true power. Is. Yeah, yeah. And I remember talking to them afterwards, and uh, they're like, "All right, cool. You know, I, I guess I'll see you next time." I was like, "This is awesome. I'll see y'all." And I'm bloodied up. I have a black eye. Like it's my almost mad. It's <laughs> <laughs> very mad. Yeah. So uh, they tell Trey he's not leaving, and I don't. And we go into the first tournament. AOK goes, and it's the first tournament I ever lose. I didn't click. Huh. And so I do my kata. I score low. I go to fight. I get skunked. And I go, oh. And I'm like, I don't, I go to, I don't know what I've been wrong. I've been training for six months trying to get back into the flow of things. Like, yeah. I was a national champion. Like, what is going on? And he goes, do you really want to know? I said, yes. He goes, show up tomorrow at 8 a.m. It's Sunday. Show up tomorrow at 8 a.m. Yes, sir. And we do. And he, Beats the hell out of me for another nine hours the next day. And I mean, we are just doing the same kata over and over and over again. And yeah. We're on the bag for 15, 20 rounds and we yeah. go back to the kata and then we go to sparring and I didn't quit. Mm -hmm. And so he finally, at that point, accepted that I was going to be there. And then the, that was our plan 
for the rest of the time to the next tournament was I would teach class or help teach class the kids, the adults, and then I would stay for another hour and a half there. So I never left that school until like midnight. I'd go home, go to school the next day, yeah, you know, do my homework while I'm like on the bus or whatever, and then start all over again. I was there seven days a week. And uh, we go to the next tournament, and he tells me I have to fight the number two ranked uh, black belt in the state. Okay. And that he was two feet taller than I was. And uh, we'll, we'll figure out where we go. And I beat him. Nice. And he jumped and hollered. He was the most arrogant son of a gun <laughs> during that tournament. And everybody hated him. Oh, yeah. yeah. But he was so proud of me. That I won that turn because that he was my first fight, so I had to fight another dude. Okay, it was a little bit shorter, but he was bigger, and I had him running away from me because really? I was hitting him so. You know, Nancy, you were just walking him down. And I yeah, show, sure. and that was it. Then yeah. he turned around and he's like, "All right, I guess he's going to be my black belt." And so, because I was third grade at the time, so a year after that, no, two years, because I tested one for my fourth degree at eighteen. Okay. Uh, cause he's like, you have to test cause I have to make you mine. This is you. I was like, I am yours. He goes, no, no, no. This is official. Okay. And we had a 21 hour long belt test. It was still by far the hardest thing I've ever done. Really? I don't think I could have done it except for the fact that I was 18 and stubborn. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> you know? wow. uh, yeah. yeah. And we broke, I mean, by the end of that test, I had two boat black eyes. I'm pretty sure my orbital socket was fractured. Broken nose, uh, three fractured ribs. I pulled. I thought I tore my calf muscle. Uh, I couldn't close my fist for like three days. Yeah. Uh, and it was it was absolutely just brutal. And I wasn't the only one. Like there was probably twelve of us that tested at the time. Yeah. So they all with his twenty one hour test. Yeah. And uh, straight or straight? There are no breaks. Okay. No breaks. And so. Uh, I think I remember fighting like 37 rounds or something that night. Yeah. And because it was me and her, the other assistant instructor, Amy. Amy, Amy Sealing. Amy Sealing. We tested for our fortune degrees again. Real again. Yeah. She's a remarkable martial. She's amazing. amazing. Yeah. She's, she runs that school in TK. Yeah. Near, yeah. So I just sent her a couple of people that moved out there. Nice. Yeah. No, no, it's a great school. It really is. But uh, yeah. So we, we, uh, so you guys tested? We tested, it. we got it. Great. And then, yay, you know. So you, were, what, you were how old? I was 18 then. Okay, so this was right before you head down to. Right, right before. Okay. So UT. I came awesome. back like the first month, the test. Okay. In college. So all of the whirlwind, like life events were like in the lot. And that was like three years or so. Yeah. And so uh, a few years after that, you know, Amy splits off to make her own school. Okay. I was coming home on the weekend to help in front uh, House of Martial Arts. And then he gets really sick. And uh, he he doesn't recover. Yeah. He, he gets pneumonia really bad. And uh, he, he just kept getting it over and over and over again. And so he, the last time, he just never came back. And so, and he knew it he did. while he was in the hospital. He, he knew that it was, yeah. yeah. And so... I remember him asking, he goes, what do you want? Because I, I need to make my will. And he had kids, but he, they were estranged to him. Yeah. And so, you know, Josh and John, they they picked a few things. But he's like, I want to read my black belts. You know, something from the school. I said, the only thing I want is that. Because that hat he wore at every tournament that I've ever seen it. Mm. Yeah, he, he came to a couple of my tournaments and he was wearing a red hat. It was this exact hat. And, yep. uh, show, show the kid, because so, I have it. I don't know if they could see it. Yeah. Um, this, this hat's older than I am. Uh, but he he wore it every... I don't, anytime he was out in public, he wore this hat. It was his lucky hat. Yeah. And so he... Uh, My tattoo. He, yeah. This was all this was all him. And so... Oh, in the, the, all the pins. Like, where I was missing a couple that broke off at some point. Uh, he had a hummingbird, because he used to call me his hummingbird, because I used to fly. Okay. Like, I was the first one in his in his school to try tricky. So, like, yeah, I was yeah, the first yeah. one to do a five chord. Yeah. First one to do, like, all of his crazy stuff. And then Dude. he had a dragonfly that was eight. That was, they were, that was his nickname for her. Okay. But, uh, 
he he wore it everywhere. And yeah. so it's like the, the only thing I want is the hat so I can remember it. And you sound like go to the chairman. I know you would. Yeah. yeah. And so did you wear it? Oh, I mean, that hat. I, I, I don't think I've been to a tournament. I've never yeah. seen you with a person. No, and, no. And that's that's why. And how old were you when, when he when when he comes to college? I want you to 20. 20. 22. Yeah. Yeah. It was like my, my third year in college. Okay. I think. So, it was a few years after that test. Uh, yeah, that was a few years after we we yeah, had we had some good runs. Yeah, but I tried to I tried to five forty one time after Mikey was shown off at the at the dojo. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it went about, it went about, it's why I'm smarter. <laughs> <laughs> it is exactly why you know how many times I've been sent to the five forty. Yeah, I already just don't see real time. I already didn't know what possessed me to even try. Like no, like I, I know I told the story. I don't know if I I've told you the story, but I know I've told you the story. Like so, Valdez was teaching us front rolls, right? Yeah, you know how jacked up I am. So we were doing front rolls in the school, and it's so Talon is behind me. And so I do a front roll and I get up and I kind of just chuckle and tell it this laughs it. <laughs> Blind guy doesn't know that I got up chuckling. Yeah. Now he's jumping Talon's ass. <laughs> about, <laughs> about, about we do not laugh at students who are trying no. and we're like all of this stuff. And as they get down, I didn't step in. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I let them. Yeah. I mean, but again, it's like the I watch. Yeah. Well, I I mean, the thing is, is that I've been teaching for, a, you know, a thousand years. Yeah. And um, I, I've i had some Mikey Rodriguez. Yeah. So, damn it, Jimmy. Wait, no. uh, <laughs> so I've had some yeah. Mikey Rodriguez's. I've had some, like, some superstars that were yeah. just far and away beyond my skill yeah. as students. And I recognized immediately, like, this person's better than me, yeah. you know? So my role as an instructor is to try to help them reach their potential. Right. And so I've had, I don't know, five or six black belts over the years who were young enough to do the risky process of learning the 540s and yeah, the butterfly yeah. twists and stuff like that. Because the process of learning how to trick is dangerous. Absolutely. Yeah. It's very dangerous. And um, before you think, now, once you have a 540, you can land like a feather yes. when you have it. Yes. Yeah. But the thousands of repetitions of posting on that knee while you're turning, mm -hmm. I watched that happen yeah. to Chris Maya and Eric Goodson and Ty Puckett. Like, I watched them just... Bang over and over again, yeah. landing on that knee, and I'm like, I'm never gonna try to do that. Oh, yeah, and I thought that was smart mm, because if I don't do something like that, yeah. I won't tear my ACL. Yeah, you're a lot smarter. Which I, which I still tore my ACL. <laughs> 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 Twice. Yeah. The same one. Ugh. All right, so That's you get so worse. you get into all right. So you're you're currently you're a fifth degree now. Fifth degree, like about early eighty. A taekwondo yes. or okay to tell me and so you join join law enforcement you get up there and so what what skills did you bring always from martial arts did did they say did you know some martial arts i want you to teach these guys or did that ever so up early on or could you do it now i do it now oh uh, it wasn't really a big thing until maybe Four or five years ago. Really? Yeah. Okay. So here's the thing. Oh, uh, I'm going to give y'all some behind the curtain mentality of law enforcement. Everybody, most most cops, most law enforcement think they are invincible until they're not. It's shocking. And, uh, you know, it's weird, right? Yeah, sh shocking to me that they love saying that they need training, that they want training, they want the time to train. But when the training is there, Everybody hates. Me. Everybody hates. Me. Yeah, and so it's uh, it's just weird for me that for a person that's trained my whole life that this wouldn't be a priority, right? You know, think that or for law enforcement officers, we get more in the hands-on, yeah, combative situations more than anything else. Do you know why, Mikey? Because it's harp. Nobody wants to become face-to-face -face with their own ineptness. Yes. 
especially someone who is in a powerful position. Yes. Yeah. To train means you have to be willing to suck yeah. for a good period of time. And people aren't interested in that. That's absolutely the truth. Absolutely true. So four or five years ago. Okay. So no, for us, it was like four or five years. Okay. So let me let me let me take a step back because going on this more far shirt. What got you into BJJ? What got you into jujitsu? Law work. enforcement. Work. Work. So long so they got you into jujitsu. I had a <clears throat> I had a bad incident and a dude about your size uh gets the drop on me. I'm on the ground. I think I remember you told me you told me a story, yes. And I'm under him for about forty five seconds. And everything that you knew didn't work. Yeah. Nothing at all. The only thing I knew that I could remember was to get my head as close to his stomach so he couldn't punch wreck. And that was it. Now I know that that's that's terrible. Nothing. Yeah, it's not nothing, but it's also really terrible. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. You know, um, and so how, how many years ago was that, you think? Approximately more. As, Probably twelve years. Ago. Okay, so twelve years ago you had this. maybe maybe thirteen. Okay, but and then, and then you were like, "Man, I need to do something. I need to do something." And then uh, I was in Waco at the time, and a Helsin Gracie Jiu Jitsu gym just opened up a month before this incident. Sure. And I'm like, "That's a sign," you know, like on the spectrum. That's I'm like a troll. I could see it. I'm yeah. under this guy. I understand. And, he, and he's doing this. And yeah, you're like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hilson Grace. He's yeah. Still the shit. <laughs> we just started thinking about it. Okay. And so. To know where I'm going tomorrow. Yeah. So, and it, it's exactly what happened. I go in. Yeah. They had like the MMA cage in the back. Yeah. It was a big, giant green mat. Chris Spicer is, felt like he was 70 feet tall. Yeah. It, he looked a lot like Trey to me, like just in his 20s. I mm -hmm. you know, just kind of a skinnier guy for being that tall, but nicest guy. Yeah. Comes in and he was a brown belt at the time, opens up this place with his wife and uh, says, Yeah, we're, you know, we, we're, we're here. Right. And I told him, like, Oh, I got a little bit of experience. He goes, That doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. He's like, Yeah, shut up with that. Yeah. Okay. So. I joined with a girl. It was me and her is our first day. We're about we're the only person, the only people there that are under 180 pounds. And so yeah. we get paired up together and we're we're learning a triangle joke. Still can't do one to this day. Okay. But we're we're figuring it out. Sure. Right? Yeah. And then I make myself go like three days a week. And okay. then I would take breaks because I was terrible at it. And then I would go back and then I would keep going. And then yeah. I was I was just doing this like kind of flip-flop thing because it was okay. the biggest ego. Yeah, we're crushing it. All right, like yeah. You know, I can't control, you know, a woman half my size. Is now am I supposed to do this in real life? You know, so um, I kept going, but I kept going. And so I remember I went to a tournament. Okay. And Helson Gracie himself would come to our, our gym like three or four times out of a year. Yeah. He would do a seminar. He loved Chris. Yeah. Absolutely liked him. Yeah. And so he can come visit. Well, we hosted a tournament. Four Hells and Greeks. Big jujitsu tournament in Waco. One of the first ones there, right? I'm still a white belt after like two years, right? I have like seven stripes on my belt. <laughs> That's how bad it was. But you, that's good because uh, I'm working on eight. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. So I go, I get to my match. I fight. And Hells and Gracie walks by, sees that I'm wearing his patch, and goes and coaches me. Huh. Wow. wow. And I... Muck it up. <laughs> and <then I'm> sure. <laughs> I get caught in a triangle choke. Yeah. I almost pass out. Yeah. I tap out. Yeah. And he berates me in the ring for 10 minutes straight. No. I have no idea what he said. Not only was he high, but he was speaking in Portuguese. Right. Okay. Yeah. And so I didn't understand where he said. I just knew that he was mad at me. Right. I couldn't read body language. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> I walk off the mat and I'm like, that's it. I'm giving this up. This is done. This is not for me. I am a kickboxer. I can't do this. Okay. And uh, Chris goes and sits next to me and gives me about five minutes. And he goes, are you okay? Yeah, but he goes, why, uh, why, why did Helson yell at you? I'm like, I, you tell me, man. Yeah. And he goes, well, oh, uh, I have a question for you. Like, what? Like, why do you keep so much space between you and your opponent? And I go, 
what? And he goes, yeah, this whole time you've always been trying to back up and you can't attack. You can't defend because you're leave, you're leaving your arms out too, or oh, yeah. you have to all are exposed. Right. If you're attacking, you want to close the space. If you're defending, you need to create space. space. Yeah. But you can't just stay on one side or the other. You have to be able to do both. Mm-hmm. And it blew my mind. It was like one of those light bulb moments. Yeah. I'm like, I could have used that for every fight I've ever had in my entire life. Yeah. And it didn't make sense to me because I tell it to my kids yeah. when I'm doing karate and kickboxing and taekwondo like you you want to control the space and i wasn't doing that on the ground right and the next week was a must let me let me ask you this because because i found myself doing a lot with you what you said like when i first started when i very first started i kept trying to push yeah kept trying to get that and of course you know what happens that my arm is taken right something's taken so after that so after that conversation well for some reason i couldn't translate the the stand-up game to the ground. Oh. Did you have that? I, it was, that was my, that was my hindrance. That was my, and that was your aha moment is realizing that conceptually they're not any different. Right. It's the range that's different. Right. You can't hit me unless you eliminate space. Right. <laughs> Quickly. Exactly. And you can't stop me from hitting you <laughs> unless you create space. Right. Um, so one of the, one of the fascinating things that I'm, learning now in the in the kind of the the different types of training that i'm doing because i've been working on kali for years yeah. and in weapons range same thing yeah yeah it's the exact same thing yeah but because we add 24 to 36 inches yeah. to the range you all of a sudden don't know how to do it anymore yeah it blew i mind. know it in this range yeah. But I forget it here, and I forget it if I go out about another two feet. Right. It, and it's, but it's not different at all. I know. But it was the repetition. That's because now, at least for me, you got to get the repetition in that range. Right. Just, yeah. And then it's timing. Yeah. Timing is different. <clears throat> timing is different because you have the different distances. Right. And so, so let's talk about, let's talk about that. Yeah. So, so you get your white belt, you compete, and now you daw a little bit, and now you're probably just, I destroyed people. I, you know, it was crazy because I think the next tournament I signed up was for IBJJF. Okay. And he gave me my blue belt right before it. So now I had to go into the blue belt. Oh, so God. And could you not have waited until <laughs> after the tournament? Yeah. yeah. So I signed up and I had like 16 people in my division that had, had an adult blue belt. Okay. And I win the first two. Okay. Did you really? My so first and my ever win in a yeah. tournament yeah. was at IBJJF, and I won with an armbar. Okay. And then the second one, I won by points, and then I lost to my third one on an arm with, I gave up. A, okay. And I'm like, this is an international tournament. I'm done. Peace yeah. out. Like, like, yeah. yeah. I, and I drank the Kool-Aid up. Oh, and, yeah. was it? and so then it was, I, I just focused strictly on figuring out why I was so bad at Yeah. Like, which, you know, still to this day, trying to figure out why I'm so bad at So uh, on, on previous podcasts, I give a lot of, of love and respect to Chance. I mean, not just, not just in general, but he got me into jujitsu. Yeah. And so, of course, I remember telling you like, hey, man, I just, I just signed up for jujitsu. And I still remember, I know you were, I know you were like, you were one of my biggest cheerleaders, but I still remember you get on the mess like, hey, let's roll. You, dude, it, to me, it was so phenomenal. That I outweigh you by probably 500 pounds <laughs> and you are just control. I mean, you are just flowing so good. Next thing I know, I'm like probably passed out somewhere. Just kidding. I didn't pass out there. Flight doctor just yeah. listening to this. Anyway, so it well, was, I mean, think it's, about it. Okay. So, so think about it this way. Even a bigger, stronger idiot. On the mat with gloves and and pads. I'm seeing her back here, bro. <laughs> no, I mean a legitimate idiot. <laughs> what I mean is a bulk of the men in the world that we know yeah. that just see red in this go time. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Think about how easily yeah. any one of us three could just oh yeah, right. You know what I mean? Move yeah. around. Yeah. Jimmy, we're already doing that. In a different realm. Right. Why yeah. should we be surprised that somebody with years of technical experience can do the yeah. same kind of thing? Right. It's our ignorance that costs us. Yeah. yeah. But I believe that 
and Hanshi said this on his uh, one of his little blurbs, which I hang on every word he says. And he talks about there was a time when you started martial arts. Yeah. You started martial arts like me. I was a young child. Yeah. And you had whatever option was there. It was the, it was the Lewis Jones Karate American Karate Studio and like work. Yeah, you didn't have forty other places that you could go. There weren't YouTube videos like the, you know what I mean. Yeah, you had to be style specific, and yeah. it was whatever was closest to your house that you could go to. Yeah, and that's the way the world was twenty thirty years ago. Right, right. Yeah, we don't live in that world anymore. No. There is no excuse not to cross train a martial art. Right. right. I believe that it is irresponsible of any striker to not get a basic rudimentary oh, knowledge. Preach. I mean, it is wow. irresponsible. Yeah, I agree. There was a time when you could make an excuse. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not available. That's not true anymore. It's everywhere. Yeah. No. Well, so Mikey told me. It, it, and I still love it. Like, I, this plays in my brain because there are many times where I'm on the mass and just getting smashed. Like, I'm not any good. I'm like, this sucks. I'm not. It's like, of course, you know, Philip and Greg are like, they're, they obviously see the progression. But in my brain, sometimes I'm like, I don't see anything at all. Mikey called me. I was like, hey, man. He goes, I'm doing this. I got invited to teach some newbies. <laughs> so, so Marshall, like, had some restraining stuff. And he says, if you want to feel better about yourself, right. go get oh. someone who doesn't do know like anything. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. You want to tell that story? Though? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, one of the agencies invited me to go to like an open mat session, right? Seven in the morning. I got to be there. Perfect. Fine. That's cool. I do the zombie class at my gym. That's that's me sleeping in late. Yeah. And so uh, I gear Noki. This Noki man, shorts and t-shirt. Cool. So I walk in. And it's their academy class. And there's like 50 of them. And I'm like, what are we doing? And he goes, like, we're breaking their psyche. I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah. What? And they're like, you cannot submit them, but you are basically to control the fight for three minutes and get them to break mentally. Make them try to give up. You don't know, hope. I, I don't know if I could. I've never done this before. And then go, you got to love it. <laughs> so, yeah. So I watched them do it to their first people. So what they did was they took their guys, they went, they did calisthenics for like five minutes. So they're already sweaty and tired when they get to us, to the mats. Then they roll with us for three minutes while we heckle them. <laughs> oh my God. And then they go and box for another two minutes with each other and then an instructor for a minute. So by the time that they're done, it's about 20 minutes of just fight. And it's their first real taste. Right. Because some of these academy students probably never, never thought of punch before. Yeah. You know, never been grabbed before, you know, unless it was like their brother or something like that, you know? Yeah. So the first person I get, I get a woman and uh, I'm play leopard. I'm, I'm flipping her. I'm literally like just <laughs> helico helicopter <laughs> stuff with her. I grab her back. I'm just like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You know, just kind of being like the schoolyard bully. Yeah. And I hear them just trash talking from the side. And I'm like, I did not know that was going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I get progressively worse with each person that I roll. <laughs> and I'm one of the smaller ones there. Yeah. You know, like, and they have a whole line of us for like to, to rotate in yeah. for these guys. And I'm out there probably every two rounds. Like I, I just want to be able, like, I yeah. just, I'm not getting tired. Like yeah. this is funny. Yeah, I I've never really gone after somebody like because if you if you did that going into my gym right off the right off the street and you just get torn up like that you would never come back right yeah right you know so you I've never really experienced mm. that point of yeah like just, just breaking someone like just look at that in the heckling like <laughs> you know yeah and uh, because. If I have to do it in real life, I'm not heckling them. I am yeah. I'm cussing them out because right, I'm sure, crazy sure, doing sure, sure, right. Yeah. But I'm never like like this is well, Jimmy. Right. I mean, think about you know when we when we think about our progression because I'm uh, you know when you talk about how much you suck at jujitsu, um, I suck at also that exact level. 
Right, right. Yeah. I got yeah. not like my skill level at jujitsu is on par with your yeah. skill level. But I want you to think about but like my suck is better than the guy sitting on the couch. Suck. No, no. What I'm saying is I want you to think about take away the fact, take away the knowledge and the skill yeah. of the shrimp and the frame. And then think about how much you suck. Because there was a time yeah. when you didn't know how to frame, right? And yeah. you didn't know how to shrimp. Yeah. yeah. And you didn't know how to scissor sweep from a guard. Like you didn't know how to do any of that. Yeah. No. No, sure. And now you do, because I tried to scissor sweep you the other day, which I generally get people with. I yeah. generally get a good guard scissor sweep. Yeah. Um, and you were posting and sitting back and keeping your base. Yeah. Like no matter how much we suck, we don't suck at the level we used to suck. Oh, look yeah. at your yeah. And, and yeah. That's why I love. But that's why yeah. that's how he is now. What a brown belt. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I that's it's yeah. the exact same problem. There's actually nothing mystical about it at all. No, it's just it's just repetition, mm -hmm. repetition, repetition. Yeah. The first time I rolled with Mikey up until speaking of white belts, there we go. There we go. I think that's where we were. Yeah, but Jiu-Jitsu doesn't suck. Yeah, Jiu-Jitsu doesn't suck. You're like, Jiu-Jitsu doesn't suck. Well, yeah, it doesn't suck. True. There we go. Sucks less. Sucks less. Sucks less, yeah. There we go. Uh, and I'll take it. I'll yeah. take it, dude. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, no idea. I'll take it, too. Because uh, I know Phil's going to be watching this later. Yeah. But when when we, when I went from school to school and then over to Enzo, yeah. I went to New Gi, New Belt and stuff, I didn't say a word about the two stripes that <laughs> they did give me earlier. Uh, so I was there. Philip was like, I'm tired of you sandbagging. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, hey, I was like, hey, man, a W's a W. That's all you say. Win's a win. But have you used jujitsu when you're out in the field? I have. Um, can, is there a story you can't tell us that you won't get in trouble for? Um, so probably recently we were working uh, on, a, on a case guy. Kid, It was a kid. It was 16. And uh, he he was wanted for robbery, and so you know, little kid, gang banger, whatever he is, you know, it's just we had to go find him. Yeah, and we do. And uh, right before we try to go and approach his house, he gets out, starts walking the neighborhood. Right. So we lose him because he's like. Diving in between houses, popping up in the next block. He's diving into. Does he get it as a fallen, or does he nope. just? Okay, he's just. That's just what he does. He was going somewhere, and we had no idea where. Okay, so we finally get him walking down the street, and I, uh, I somehow get point on it. Like I'm, I'm the first car to find him. Okay, right. So talk on the radio. Cars are stacking up behind us. We kind of have this random ad clock plan. And, uh, and we're like, we're, we're just going to jump out. Yeah. We don't know where he's going to go. And he's a little kid, so he's got to run for him. And so I drive past him, and he looks at my car, because it, obviously it is not a marked car, but you can tell it's a police car. Yeah. But so he just kind of gives me this funny look, and I jerk my wheel as hard as I could to the left. So I can get in front of him. So if he tries to run, he would hit my fender. Uh, and I just popped out. Okay. And he does this, like, the the three steps, like, should I run? Should I not? And at that time, I grabbed him. I threw him down on the ground. And I had him locked up uh, before my guys could get out of the car. And they come in. They jump on him. Because I just hold him there. I don't attempt to go any sure. farther than that. Right. Uh, and so we pick him up. And we, you know, put his cap, his handcuffs on. He picks him up. He goes, "Hey, hey, hey! I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, I just want y'all to know, 16 years old. I have it to defend myself. I have a gun, and it was in his hoodie pocket. And, he, and if, if I wouldn't have scared him the way he did, because he put his hands out and he was kind of like doing this motion. Ah, uh, yeah. And uh, if I wasn't able to grab him fast enough, I don't know if he would have thought about trying to get to the, but he didn't have a chance. Yeah, that was good. And so, because uh, I had him on the ground and had both arms out, locked up behind him before he, before he realized who I even was. Sure. And the cool thing is, is that, um, and obviously I go down, one of my dear friends works for, um, his wife works for Axon. Yeah. 
and you know that yeah company, yeah you know, some yeah um i'm sure everybody because it's the it's the only one right it is yeah uh so <clears throat> i watch a lot of <laughs> Body cam stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. Mikey Rodriguez is quite capable of taking this guy down and subduing him and cuffing him right. uh, all by himself. Yeah. The problem is how much you can have to hurt him to get him to that point. When you add another one or two people, yeah. it's so much safer yeah. you know, to restrain somebody without injuring them yeah you know so we at least my agency recognized that for very like four or five years ago we started creating a like controlled like a group takedown thing. yeah yes and so that was one of our biggest things was they they read lots of fbi reports they read our own use of force reports well um, you know, cameras, footage, whatever they could get at the time, because that was before the body cams, before we started wearing body cams. Yeah. And they basically came up with this program, like, this is what we're dealing with. Let's find the answer to that. Mm -hmm. And uh, if this answer fits with that one, maybe the same answer will fit in this mm -hmm. situation, yeah. in this situation. So we don't have to teach right. everybody. Right. Do you think that there will ever be a, a, a mandate, if you will, that all federal law enforcement, whoever, military, whatever, will have to go through combat training like that, like a jujitsu. Do you think it will ever get to that point where where law enforcement goes, you will do jujitsu at least X number of times a month? So we do that in the academy. Okay. We push them through. And it's it's based off the jujitsu, but it's not jujitsu. Yeah, but it's just the academy, right? But, but it's the academy. So is there any fine tuning throughout the year? Like, you have to go do this? So that's what people like me are for. So I'm certified to be able to teach it. Right. And so once a year, I put my whole task force through it. Okay. And so I only get once a year. So I have to really pick something that they're going to stick with. Yeah. So, uh, like, the group takedowns or, well, you know, the, like, a lot of times I'm now working, like, worst case scenario situation. Uh, you have a bandit that's on top of you. Right. And uh, this is your fastest way to be able to get to your tools to be able to handle it without backup comes. This is the, either that, I'll tell you, one of the, one of two things needs to happen. Yeah. And I'm really surprised that we don't have right. this already. But either everybody in law enforcement needs to have some version of, of the knowledge and skill that you have. Yeah. Or we need to fast track the technology of that Scarlett Johansson Black Widow thing. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, uh, here's the thing: we have no, Taser, like yeah. we have the like yeah, the yeah, technology yeah. Yeah. exists. We need to be able to go bang and then just yeah. Because I'm surprised by how many law enforcement guys join the mass, right? Uh, or let's say Henzos that. A two stripe white belt. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. That I'm like, dude, like you're. We need better technology or more skilled people. Yeah. yeah. So, here's here's the crutch for that is that a lot of our officers will rely too much on the technology on the technology, and so when that fails, they have no backup. Mm -hmm. You know, because they do. They're, yeah. they're not yeah. right impervious. Well, know? and and, and it's, it's probably not like a a. a it's probably not the best that the tech world has to offer. Right. right. And the other thing is, is you still have to deal with that person in sure. some way. Yeah. Like, you just can't end up with the taser and be like, all right, I won. Right. You know, they're going to continue to try to fight and continue wow. to get away. So uh, the thing is that we're trying to spread across, because there's only 60 of us, at least for my agency, across the country yeah. that are certified to teach. Um. And so we're spread out. We we do we do these uh, officer training, and we invite everybody. Yeah, it's not just our agency or our task forces or anything yeah. like that. We invite everybody in that spot at that time. If you want to come, this is the training I'm offering. And so, like I've done sheriffs, I've done other PDs, I've yeah. done you know, it's it's been really fun. Yeah, and to see like. The older guys are like, oh, well, that's not what we do in our, you know, back in my day. Like, they get it. I'm not trying to change any of that. Right. So I'm just trying to give you something else that, yeah. and by the end of the session, yeah. 
they're like, why didn't I do this? Right, right, right. Yep. You know, like, you know, and it's been that kind of eye opener. Sure. It has sure. been, it's by far the, my, I, I've done my job for 16 years now. And it's by far my favorite assignment I've ever had. So See, as, so as we wind this down, yeah. give, give either your law enforcement buds who may be watching this yeah. or just a, two old guys jumping on the mats for the first time in jujitsu with white belts. What, what would you do to encourage them to get out there? Um, to get out? On they the just mats. get on the mats. Just get on the mats. Just, just try it. Give it six months. Chris is months. Give it six months. Yeah, that's good. I am. Um, you're going to hate it. Because because if you give it six days, then you're not going to make it. No. Right. If, you, if you give it a week, you're going to hate life. It's going to hate you. Right. It's going to eat you up. But six months is enough time to see. I like that. Six, I think that's good. That's good. That's good. good. Six months is progress. Oh. After three months, you're, you'll, you'll understand your first concept that you've done wrong the whole time. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. And then after that, yeah. you will... You will slowly drink the Kool Aid. At six months, it's the make or break. That's either for you or it, or it's not. And that, but after six months, you've got some skill right. that yeah. the majority of people don't yeah. have. Right, no. right. Uh, that's good. That's awesome. I mean, I like that. Listen, man, you know, I have nothing but love for you. I'm so glad that we got. Yeah, me too, too, man. That was fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's good yeah. times. I appreciate it. And uh, and for for our watching and listening audience, I appreciate your self-defense stuff because over to get our black belt, we have to go through self-defense and you've probably seen some self-defense. You're like, I don't know. Philip shared this thing, like the chair self-defense or something. <laughs> something <laughs> crazy today. Like, but anyways, yeah. all that to say, you make us keep it uh, realistic. Yep. And that's what I appreciate. Like, I'm not going yeah. to do, I'm not going to throw any spinning tornado kick and out right. there. Yeah. It's just very basic. And when I say basic, very practical lesson says. So I appreciate that, man. Thank you. And uh, you know, I have nothing below. But anyways, chance got next week off is this Thanksgiving. You guys will get fed. That's so, right. Hey, this yeah, we're gonna go yeah, see my mom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah? Yeah. Hey, you're telling her I said we're gonna see you. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go see your aunt Rachel. Listen, uh, uh, it, there's no reason for me to tell her. <laughs> uh, because uh after she walks out of the room, yeah. she will not know that we are there. Yeah, okay. yeah, she's hey, she still knows who we are. That's yeah, that's and saying. that's not not. And what's great is we get to spend an entire day yeah. surprising her with our visit <laughs> over and over and over and over. That's, that is awesome. yeah. Now she's gonna go to the bathroom. We go. When did y'all get here? Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be like Christmas over and over and over. Oh, and over. That's, that's awesome. gonna be great. Well, for me, I'll be at work. Yeah, like you, you people. Hey, stop flying about Thanksgiving. Give us there that. Man. Hey, come on, man. So that's what I, that's what I'm gonna be doing. So, anyways, listen. Thanks, guys. Love you guys. Like and subscribe. Goodbye. Peace. Peace.